July 18th, the Sea of Japan. A Navy task force approaches the east coast of Korea. Destination, Pohang. Mission, to land the men and machines of the 1st Cavalry Division. The Korean battle line was moving rapidly on all fronts. Only on arrival were the troops informed that the landing would be unopposed. The division's 27,000 men started ashore. Psychology says how you're supposed to feel sort of disappointed. Expect to fight and then don't have to. Maybe so. I wasn't disappointed. On July 20th, the Reds reached Teja. 24th Division troops led by General Dean were to hold as long as possible. There was something fishy about Tijan. I mean, they threw in a little artillery and then we waited. Nothing. Nobody. Then wham! They were all over the place. We found out we were surrounded. It was a case of move out fast to stay put for good. As it was, we were going to have to make a run down a corridor of fire a mile long, which we did. We had bought more tires, but Ted John was gone, and with her, General D. We traded time for space, two weeks for the land between Ted John and the Naktong River. From behind the wide, deep waters of the Naktong, we could test our growing strength. We cut the bridges and poured our fire on the opposite banks. Daily communist attacks probed up and down the length of the line, searching for an opening. Daily, we handled upon those attacks all the firepower at our command. The line headed. In the north and eastern sectors, our own K troops had recovered from the first shattering blows they had taken. They would retreat no more. Where tanks are concerned, Korea is no place to have a war. There's only two directions up the hill and down the hill. And that perpendicular terrain puts armor in a straitjacket. Still, you do what you can. With a little added elevation, a tank's rifle can be darn good artillery. We found a way to get that extra elevation. It worked fine. Early in August, General William Keane received orders to carry out our first large-scale offensive action. The enemy was trying to punch through in the south and capture Poussin. Task Force Keane, composed of General Keane's 25th Division, the 5th RCT, and the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, was to repel this attack. It was the 6th of August. I remember, of course, that's my birthday. Also, it's the first time I ever got shot at. I remember thinking to myself, happy birthday, child. The word came down. Time to move again. We had to get the high ground. There's a base of fire. The armor took charge of the low ground. And from the ridge line, sparked by the Marine Brigade, foot soldiers unleashed their fire. Methodical, concentrated, dead. The Marines, equipped with a heavy bazooka, found it highly effective against Russian-made armor. soldiers faced a dirty, dangerous task. To clear the area of red snipers and stripers. For veterans of the Pacific, the action was painfully familiar. 
Like the Japanese, the small-bodied North Korean soldier had a talent for hiding behind a bush no larger than you might grow in a window box. took its quota of prisoners. Many had shed their uniforms, hoping to escape in the white civilian clothes worn underneath. At close quarters, the enemy lost his fearsomeness. Usually, he was very young. Always, he was glad to be out of the fighting. Task Force Keene had earned a brief moment in which to catch its breath. Busan Harbor, August 29th. The first non-American troops to join the UN forces in Korea arrive from Hong Kong. Two battalions from the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders and the Middlesex Regiment. To us, Troop, Troop, we was happy to reach Korea. The past six months, we'd been sweltering in Hong Kong. And it's so blooming hot, we were scared to dig a hole for fear we'd bust right through into hell. At least over here, we'd be cool enough so as a man could enjoy his blinking tea time. September 1st. An all-out red offensive across the Noctong tightens our circle of defense. The siege of the Pusan perimeter is on. <laughs> were dissipating their own. Food, ammunition, supplies, all the tools of war were being stockpiled. Our days on the defensive were nearing an end. On September 15, 1950, the UN forces take the offensive. An assault fleet appears off Walmy Island at Incheon Harbor, 150 miles behind enemy lines. It's a daring end-run maneuver, which takes the sleeping enemy completely by surprise. At 0630 hours, the Marines begin the assault. The naval barrage has cleared the way for them, but this is still a risky operation. Headquarters must gamble on the first try being good. In John Byland, 30-foot tides leave no time for a second attempt. We had orders to neutralize resistance and do it fast. Dig them out and cover up the holes. It took us 58 minutes to secure the island. With the next tide, more Marines move into the streets of Incheon itself. They meet little resistance, and within hours, the city is secure. The big gamble has paid off. With the surrender of Incheon's modern harbor, the back door to Seoul is opened wide. Simultaneously in the south, 
the reinforced 8th Army breaks out of its Busan stronghold, splitting the encircling Red forces as it thrusts across the Nakhon River to begin its drive northward.